Hello, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com and I'm talking today about being glad to be alive again. And this isn't something that happened all that recently, um, but what I want to do is read to you part of an email I received. It started off, Hi Cynthia, I have an unusual story to tell you in regard to the Mandela Effect. My name is Steve Boucher and I'm from St. Catharines, Ontario. I'm 63. I've had several occurrences of the Mandela Effect in my life over the years, but none like the most recent one. I watched your interview with Regina Meredith on Gaia TV and have been a fan of your work for a while now. Shortly after the interview with Regina, I decided to visit your Facebook page to learn more. Upon arriving at your Facebook page, I was greeted with a message from your husband stating that he regretted to inform us that you had passed away and that you had been ill for quite a while. I was shocked to read this news and immediately responded offering my condolences. I remember feeling this great sadness come over me as I had very much enjoyed your work. A month or so later, I noticed a new video of yours on YouTube and was amazed to see that it was a recent video. Then I started to notice more recent videos popping up on YouTube. It didn't take me long to realize that you were still alive. I realized then that I must have shifted to a different timeline in which you had not passed away. I knew then that I had to write to you and tell you this story, as strange as it sounds. I'm grateful to have shifted to a timeline in which you are alive and continuing to bring videos to the public about the Mandela Effect and time shifting. Hope you don't think I'm crazy. I just had to tell you. So I wrote back to Steve, had a back and forth conversation. Um, what this is. <laughs> what I want to say is it feels incredible to be on the inside of an actual alive again experience because what I ended up um, informing Steve um, after we went back and forth to pinpoint exactly when it was that he had heard that I'd passed away after a long illness. This would have corresponded to winter of 2016 and my next YouTube was in April of 2017. During that time I actually was very sick and I almost did actually die. So. That's what I informed Steve and let him know. This is not just your imagination. And now, from the inside, I know that it felt to me like I actually was facing death. I only told a couple of close friends, close family. Um, one friend had guessed that something was terribly wrong correctly at that time. But I feel uh, humbled and grateful and uh, just a renewed sense of reverence that each of us does have this uh, form of connection with one another, even if we haven't yet met in person, that we do actually have a collaborative, conscious, creative quality that we can bring our love to bring healing and sometimes people back alive again. I think it does help when you're not that close to a person who is net that near death um, in order to recognize that they've died and then they can come back again. Otherwise it's quite a shock and most people don't handle that too well. I did describe one experience where my roommate's cat, Ashes, had died. He was hit by a car and I described this in my book Reality Shifts When Consciousness Changes the Physical World. I include a picture of, of Ashes the cat. I've got a picture of it here. Here he is. Cute little guy. And Ashes had been a, uh, a house cat that was part of our household while I was living with Catherine. I then moved across the street and was happy to visit, get visits from Ashes on a regular basis. He would cross the street to come say hi, hang out in the garden with me, and I loved seeing him. And then one day, um, at my old roommate Catherine came to tell me that there was terrible news that Ashes had been hit by a car and killed. And subsequently, um, I felt a great deal of grief and sadness that I wouldn't see him again. But then, about two weeks after he had died, there was ashes in my garden um, across the street. And so he didn't quite look as youthful and vigorous. He looked a little greasy. Um, not so much like maybe he'd been hit by a car, but like something had troubled him. Maybe he had had some sort of health problem but he wasn't washing as well as he used to, but he was alive, so I got to enjoy that. In my experience being alive right now, I feel a renewed sense of reverence, a renewed commitment to keep a purity in my heart that I'm able to feel 
all kinds of love and joy and recognize that happiness really does come from within. And when we have that clean, pure heart, that connection with just pure nature, with source, oneness, God, that it really is possible to rise above all of those so-called deadly sins and not feel greed, envy, um, any of those problems. And so there, it's possible just to go through life feeling joy and fearless. So that's the bright side of having come through this experience. And I did want to share it. Um, I've got a blog post that goes into a great deal more detail about this. One thing I'd like to touch on in the video, though, is there are a couple of other types of reality shifts that remind me of Alive Again. One of them is the one of being suddenly appearing out of nowhere. And I know I've mentioned it before. Uh, when I wrote my book, Quantum Jumps, that was the time period that I was researching the work of physicists around the world. I included the work of Raphael Busso, but for some reason I had never heard of Yasunori Nomura. Even though both professors were doctors of physics at UC Berkeley, both doing similar research and both interested in a theory of everything, combining both the quantum mechanics viewpoint, quantum interpretations of reality, uh, with the cosmological, uh, <laughs> astronomical physics that we're used to with relativity from uh, the work of Albert Einstein. And so the thing that's striking to me is that if a person can never have existed, like Yasunori Nomura did not used to exist for me, and then one day I saw him in 2014 in real life, and I, I was thrilled that he had come into my reality because I'd been reading his papers and felt a little badly that I hadn't incorporated his work in my book, Quantum Jumps. But I told him in person why that was, and to his credit, I'm pretty sure he totally understood. As I have understood when people told me back in 2010 that I didn't used to exist, and they knew that for sure, because they were doing research, um, scholarly research, in the field that I'm also working in. And anyway, so it all ties together. I think the key here is recognizing that we are consciousness. That's our true reality. And then based on being pure consciousness, and we can experience that in our hearts, as I'm doing right now, being alive again, you can actually get that feeling of how good can it get when we recognize who we really are. So until next time, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com.